The Hong Kong commute is not for the faint of heart. Challenging the senses and the nerves, it requires the perfect amount of planning and patience. Oh, listen to that, the yeah. dulcet sounds of the early morning commute. <laughs> so who has the time to figure out the greenest way to get there? From solar-powered cruising to electric air taxis to speeding across the sea carbon-free. These are the designers and dreamers searching for sustainable mobility solutions. I'm Christy Lustout. This is Tech for Good. Grind. Yeah. It's not easy. But we have to do it every day. <laughs> we're kind of used to it. I'm sharing the morning commute with Becky Liu, a professor at Hong Kong University. Her research focuses on adapting transportation to people's needs. Our concept of sustainable mobility is that it will have a hierarchy of transport mode that will suit different local contexts. To get to the public transportation network, you have to drive to get there. Indeed. And you get this, the congestion. Indeed. Becky's an expert when it comes to navigating Hong Kong transit. It's all about finding a low-stress, low-carbon way to reach your destination. And tagging along with Becky reminds me that we Hong Kongers have plenty of options. So this is a very sustainable and green mode of transportation. When the mid-level escalators opened in 1993, they were a low-tech solution for a very steep challenge, climbing the city's high hills. Why does something like this work in a place like Hong Kong? Because of its efficiency. When you make it easy, then people will embrace it. Ah, so that's it. To be a truly sustainable option, it needs to be as easy as jumping on an electric escalator. Riding the mid-levels, it's easy to think that maybe public transport works, but what if it does in the city where you live? And how do you cut down on traffic pollution and clean up a crazy commute while keeping everyone on the move? A group of students in the Netherlands are trying to solve the problem by turning to the sun. When I grew up, solar energy was around but was not so well known. You saw that on houses solar panels became a thing but implementing it for other purposes was not a thing. I believe that in 2050 solar cars will be all around. That every car will be self-sufficient. You don't need to charge it, you don't need to fuel it up. It will be completely self-sufficient. Cars will be part of a problem. They only will be the solution and they will be helping out with a lot of things. For example, with sharing energy. And it will be an integral part of the whole energy network. I'm Bob van Ginkel and I'm the technical manager of Solar Team Eindhoven. Bob is just one of the brains behind Stella Terra, a fully operational street ready solar SUV. He and the team of students at the Eindhoven University of Technology built it in one year. Today, Bob and the team are introducing Stella Terra to young students at a nearby primary school. The goal is to show them what's possible when your car's powered entirely by the sun. It's just great to see the kids' enthusiasm when you give a presentation like this and see that they are really driven by the idea and they also are enthusiastic about the car. Yeah, deep questions and questions about the car that are make us think as well about the design. Solar Team Eindhoven are proud of the car they've created designed around the user with practicality and continuous clean power in mind, they say their Stella Terra is the world's first off-road solar-powered vehicle. Already road legal, it's much more than just a proof of concept. 3.3 volt. Yeah. Stella Terra drives on the energy of the sun, and she does that by the solar panels that are on the top of the car. So you charge the battery by the solar panels, and then you can also drive during the night or in a tunnel. So the car is full of small innovations and each are unique in, in its own kind because we are building something that has never been done before. We almost need to design every component ourselves uh, fully from the ground up. 
Here you can see that the car has more of a droplet shape. That is for the aerodynamics, to make sure that the energy needed to drive fast is as low as possible. But also, because you are of course an off-roader, we want to have the car robust and sturdy. So it's a little bit higher from the ground, we have big tires, but also very lightweight. So the car only weighs 1200 kilograms. Whether it's electric or solar powered, the weight of a car directly affects battery efficiency. In other words, how far you can go. Because Stella Terra is constantly recharging in sunlight, its battery is smaller, hence a lighter, longer range vehicle. The team recently put the vehicle through a rigorous road test in Morocco, driving more than a thousand kilometers, starting at the country's northern coast and ending in the Sahara Desert in the south. The reason we choose for Morocco was there are various landscapes there and driving time, I think, was really, really nice. The first time that we got to the more sandy part, so when we see the mountaintops of the Sahara, it was really nice to see that car and was driving there, kind of closure for the team, so the end of our journey. The durability and dual functionality of Stella Terra builds on Stella Vita, a solar-powered camper van produced by a previous team at the university. Also able to store energy and create its own plug-in power, it was designed for long distance, multi-day journeys, you know the kind, where you're basically living out of your car. The seats can fold down to form a bed and to have extra space and also cook from the inside. We can pop the hood up. And then from the back, we can um, pop it down. And then you can cook from the back of the car, all on the power of the sun. So you are completely independent and free to go wherever you like. Stella Terra has a top speed of 145 kilometers an hour. And the current battery range allows you to cover up to 710 kilometers. Even on cloudy days, the team says that they were able to travel 550 kilometers purely on power stored in the battery. A real Sahara dust. The power conversion back to the battery, the battery management system, the choice of the battery, everything counts. Everything counts. And this team added then that the car should be taken into a rough environment, which led to the situation that you also have to make a very robust car. And it should be lightweight because of efficiency, because otherwise your roll resistance will be too large. So harsh environment, lightweight, that's a contradiction, so it's not easy. So what you learn from all these kind of, of student teams and developments is to really go to the edge of what you can do. Pushing the edge of what's possible, it's why these students are convinced their solar car tech can fuel our way forward. My biggest learnings from the project are probably that you sometimes need to be a bit stubborn. If someone tells you this won't happen, you were not able to do this, that you directly say, okay, fine. But to really think, hey, is this really not possible or do they just think it's not possible? And then prove it, prove them wrong. We're heading now your way. Our mission is to inspire people and companies to accelerate the transition to a sustainable future.